You've probably heard about physics engines such as Havoc, PhysX, and Chaos. But did you know that there's a fake physics engine that has seen wide adoption in recent Unreal Engine games and was for the most part made by one Japanese guy? To be exact, it is a pseudo-physics plugin for Unreal that allows developers to easily set up simulated movement of hair, clothing, and other body parts to make their movement more exaggerated, stylish, or cute. It was used on big titles such as Tekken 8, Stellar Blade, Lies of P, Princess Peach Showtime, Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising, and many more. The best thing about it is that it's open source and can be used for free under an MIT license, also allowing indie devs to make use of it in their games. One example of this is Pandan, who's making a really cool PS2 era inspired action platformer called Gear Grid. The physics plugin I'm talking about is called Kawaii Physics and was made by a developer who goes by the handle of Okazu. Okazu-san actually has a lot of experience in the games industry, having worked for Capcom in the past, and he was also a support engineer at Epic Games Japan for roughly 7 years. Kawaii Physics can be downloaded from their GitHub page and comes with a great sample project that you can get up and running in only a few minutes, so let's check out what it has to offer. When you boot up the project, you see this wide open space with many different examples. But all the way on the left side, you can see a comparison between the regular physics assets, animation dynamics, and Kawaii Physics with different settings. You can see that the physics asset approach is quite stiff and the twin tails are barely moving. The anim dynamics approach does look a lot better, but you can see the hair clipping through the shoulders and not having all that much bounce. And I think you can clearly see that both of the kawaii physics examples here are vastly superior, with me personally preferring the one on the left side. Kawaii physics also claims to be more performant than chaos physics, so that's another thing to keep in mind. The great thing is if you want to know what values were used here, we can just open up the animation blueprint and see exactly how things were set up, so we can then apply these settings to our own projects as well. All we have here are two kawaii physics nodes, one for each ponytail, with different physics settings, bone lengths and threshold setup. You can also easily add kawaii physics to other body parts as well, let's say I want to add it to the necktie. I can just add another node here, select the root bone, in this case a underscore tie underscore bottom, change the tag to be unique, connect the physics settings and set the dummy bone length to something around 10 to match the length of the tie. And this is all it takes to add stylish movement to a new body part. Of course, you could then spend a lot of time playing around with these physics setting values to tweak the movement to your liking. And this is also where you could add more nodes for other body parts as well. The tooltips do a decent enough job explaining the parameters, but the sample map has many more examples prepared for us to show the effects of these settings and many other cool features. I'm not gonna go through everything, but let's check out the most important ones. You can easily add the ability to be affected by wind and gravity to your target bones by just hitting a check mark. You can also enable collision for bones, so the skirt will properly react to the legs instead of just clipping through. These collision settings would also work with dynamic objects, like maybe a ball being tossed through the hair of your character. Kawaii physics will also work during cutscenes or other scenes put together with the sequencer. You can even implement physics warm up with just a single node per bone. If you've played or watched interactive dramas like The Quarry made with Unreal Engine, you've probably noticed hair resetting or flying around every time there's a camera cut. Warm up is here to prevent popping and glitching like that during cutscenes or when switching animations. And then there's also just an area showing off what the results would look like with different settings for damping, stiffness, limit angle, dummy bone sizes, and so on. But it will probably take some trial and error to get these just right for a project. And again, everything you need to know is right here. You can just open up all of these blueprints and see how things work for yourself with no need to go through documentation or look up tutorials. Now of course you'd want to use this not just on a skeletal mesh standing around in the map, but also on the player character. And this is also quite easy to set up if you have some experience with Unreal Engine. So I'm just gonna briefly go over it and not cover it step by step. When working inside of the sample project, we can simply import the third person character package. Overwrite the game mode to the third person game mode in the world settings and then replace the mannequin inside the third person character blueprint with Great Chan. And then also use the animation blueprint we played around with before. Then I had to copy over and slightly adjust the state machine from the mannequin and put it into Great Chan's animation blueprint. And now everything looks perfect, right? Well, actually the character only came with an idle and run animation, so in order to use all of them, I had to set up a retargeter. And after exporting the animations, I just had to replace them in the animation blueprint. Then I just combined the physics of the skirt with the twin tails and everything else, and lastly put the character into a cool looking map from the marketplace to finish things off. And yeah, the awesome shader that comes with this map definitely does a lot of the heavy lifting of making this look anime. 
And that's how easy it is to make an anime style game with kawaii physics. So once you get the hang of using the sample, you can also just download the plugin by itself and add it to your ongoing projects. And of course it also works for non-anime games and I even used it on my mascot character to give the hoodie a little bit of secondary movement. So I definitely encourage you to download the sample project and play around with it a little bit to see how Kawaii Physics could add that little bit of extra polish to your projects. Huge thanks to Okazu-san for making this plugin, thanks to Chekela-san for providing the Grey-chan character model, and as always a huge thanks to my awesome patrons and YouTube channel members.